lovely friends welcome back to onyx food hill today i'm going to be bringing you a very delicious and a popular nigerian delicacy we are going to be making isewu isewu is a very popular nigerian delicacy it's often sold in restaurants and in fast food joints so this is how we are going to make this and we have all the ingredients we are going to use to make isewu here right here okay for the essential it's usually made with goat head so i have my goat head here pieces this is the main ingredient for essential secondly we have the brain the goat brain this is used to thicken the sauce for the essential and i have here cayenne pepper or seasoning palm oil as a base salt and some stock cubes and i have these Utazi. This is a very bitter herb. It is used to garnish isewu at the end of the day. I have a calabash nutmeg. This is what we call ehuru in Igbo language. Okay, it's a spice. It smells very good, like the usual nutmeg. And I have here scotch bonnet pepper. This is really spicy, so I'm going to be using two. And I have two red onions for cooking the meat and for garnishing. And lastly, I have edible potash okay guys to make this isewu i'm going to start by washing my goat pieces it's important to wash your meat very well just make sure you clean this very very properly because this is usually roasted in open fire so it has some stain of charcoal on firewood so i'm just going to rinse this into a bowl also you will have to remove hair if you notice some fur on the goat meat just take your time to remove it you can even use a knife to scrape some of the parts out that you don't like because you're going to eat this and you will love to enjoy it so it's best you clean this properly okay this usually comes with the with the feet as well this is how they sell it over here comes with the legs so I'm just doing the final cleaning because the guy that pieces the meat for me has already helped me to clean some of the parts so I'm just doing the minor minor cleaning just to take my time to make sure this is properly clean so I'm just going to remove parts like this away Okay, once I'm done cleaning this and the water turns out clear like this, I'm just going to end the washing here. I'm going to bring the meat into a pot. Okay, once I'm done rinsing this, I'm going to be adding in onion. I just chop one of the onions into larger chunks. I'm going to be adding in two seasonings, stock cubes, into this. Have a teaspoon of ground calabash nutmeg, also known as ehuru. This is really going to help intensify the flavor of the goat meat. Have a teaspoon of salt, just add to your taste. Finally, I just crushed the scotch bonnet pepper. I'm adding this to this. This is really spicy, so I'm just going to go gentle with the pepper. Next, I'm going to add water to the meat, just enough to cook the meat. Next, I'm going to turn on my heat and bring this to a boil. Just before I put the lid over this, I would like to stir this to allow all the ingredients to combine together. And I'm going to wrap the brain with a foil. Okay, just leave the brain in a foil. You don't want this to scatter while it's cooking in the meat because you need to use this later so i'm just going to leave it in the pot just like this it's going to cook along with the goat's head so i'm just going to place the lid over this and bring to a boil it should boil until the goat's meat is cooked the meat is cooking i'm just going to go ahead and chop the utazi into tiny pieces 
just like this I love mine with thin strands I'm done I'm just going to set it aside next I'm going to cut one red onion just a medium size into thin rings once you have the desired quantity you want you can shift the remaining aside We're going to use this to garnish the isemu at the end of this. Last thing I'm going to do while waiting for the meat to cook is to dissolve this edible potash. So I have tried out other alternatives to this using baking soda, lemon juice to make isemu, but I didn't end up with the same test like edible potash so if you can make use of baking soda you can just use that just know that you're not going to have the same results not exactly the same results like when using edible potash so now I'm going to add in some warm water to the edible potash just enough to dissolve these then I'm going to leave this to melt in the water Okay, I've cooked this for 25 minutes and I've been checking this to make sure the meat is soft enough so now once I'm sure the meat is soft enough if you take a look the water has reduced and I'm going to turn off heat it's cooked okay I'm going to take out the brain which I wrapped once the potash has finished dissolving I'm just going to strain this to make sure there's no sand or any particle of potash going into the isenu next we are going to start preparing isenu sauce so i love to use a pan like this because it's easy to reheat the isenu after i'm done mixing so to the pan i'm going to have one third cup of palm oil you can see how to make palm oil at home from the link above and in the description below Next, I'm going to start adding the edible potash just a little at a time. Then as I'm adding this, I'm going to be stirring the palm oil. This is going to help cuddle the palm oil and give it a more thicker and a creamy consistency. And it's also going to change the color from reddish to a bit yellowish or orangey color. Okay, when doing this, don't add that one, just a little bit of E. You can increase the palm oil if it seems not enough. Okay, I'll just keep adding this and keep stirring until the palm oil changes completely. I'm going to bring the goat brain into the mortar. I've used this mortar before to crush this scotch bonnet pepper so I'm just going to mix everything there. So I'm just going to mash this to make sure there's no lump in this. Alright, so you should have something like this very smooth. I'm going to start adding my seasoning to the sauce. So I'm going to bring in the goat brain. I'm just going to add a little of it, not too much. Okay, this is going to help thicken the sauce. Just mix everything until it dissolves. If your consistency is very thick, you can add about two to three tablespoons of your meat stock into this and adjust the test you're liking so i just added that into this i don't like it very thick it should be a little bit runny but not watery 
Next, I'm going to start adding my seasonings. So into this, have a teaspoon of ehuru that I just crushed. Just a pinch of salt just to test. And one seasoning cube. And I'm going to add in cayenne pepper. Just adjust this to your own taste. It shouldn't be too spicy for me. Next, I'm just going to stir this around until it's well combined. Proceed to adding the utazi leaves. Okay, I'm just going to add a little here into the sauce. Then I'm going to stir this and make sure it's combined properly. Also, you can add in some tiny bits of onions to this if you wish. Lastly, I'm going to add in the cooked meat. I just separated this from the broth. You can always adjust all the ingredients to your taste. So I'm just going to bring everything in here. Stir this properly and make sure it combines well with the sauce. Let the sauce coat the meat completely until they are fully coated with the sauce. If you wish to add in some of the leaves, it's totally up to you. Next, I'm going to reheat this again. If you wish to serve this immediately after mixing this, it's totally up to you. But I'd love to reheat this a little bit for at least 2 minutes before serving this. Just after leaving this on fire for 2 minutes, it will become runny just like this. But you can leave this to cool down a little bit. And it will become thickened. Traditionally, Isian is usually served in a mortar like dish like this. <laughs> this looks very portable. So, this is how it's served. But if you don't have this, you can just use a dish or any plate to serve your Isian. So, guys, I'm going to be serving this right inside this portable dish. Guys, for the finishing, I'm going to garnish this with utazi leaves. And I'm also going to bring the onion rings which I've cut before. This is just perfect, just like restaurant style. This was how to make Iseon at home. Let me know what you think about homemade Iseon. I hope you replicate this recipe at home. Leave your suggestion in the comment section below. If you are new to this channel, please give me a thumbs up. At least for this video, give me a thumbs up. Share this video with your friends and also subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Thank you for watching. Until next time, see you soon. Bye.